All right, guys, we're rolling. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, two one. one. All right, we got it. I'm Dan Har with Music News Nashville, and we're here with Bombadil in Duluth. We're sitting in Trishland, one of the coolest antique shops I've ever seen. It's not just a location, though. It's a girl, too. Her name is Trish. Come check it out. Bombadil, do me a favor. Introduce yourselves. Hello, my name's Daniel. I play the bass and sing. Hello, my name is James. I play the drum set and sing. I'm Stuart. I play the piano and sing. You guys are back on the road basically the first time in three years. Daniel, you had some medical issues that kept sure. you guys off the road. Uh, uh, if you can, just tell us just briefly about that. Sure, I had some problems, some neural, uh, nerve problems and tendonitis problems that um, became so bad that I, I couldn't play music anymore and we had to take a break and um, I've rested and now we're back and doing better. got a new record and we're excited to play. During that time, um, I guess during your recuperation time, were you writing songs for the new record? Sure, we never really stopped writing uh, songs. Actually, we put out a record while we weren't uh, on tour, while we weren't playing during hiatus, and those were the songs that we were writing during our, our break. We were constantly writing so during that time. Now, are you, all, uh, are you all part of the songwriting process for the album? Do you all sit down and say, okay, I'm going to contribute this, or hey, I got this great idea? Sure. Uh, Bombadil is three songwriters. Uh, Daniel and Stuart write songs. We also have a fourth member, Brian, who doesn't tour with us. Uh, and I handle the recording and production of the songs. So, uh, and we all kind of produce it together. So we all work on each other's songs a lot. And you're all multi-instrumental. Yes, Pretty much. Working on it. So working on it. Continuing <laughs> education. It, it always is, isn't it? You learn yes. so much on the road. Mm -hmm. So, Metrics of Affection. That's the title of the new album due out in July? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I like to ask bands, what are some of your most favorite memories from the road? Everybody has both those, man, this was the killest, greatest thing we've ever done. And some people have those, oh my God, this was the horror story. I want to hear a little bit of each if you can. And we'll start uh, with we'll right. start, we'll start right here. Okay, uh, once we passed a car that was on fire. <laughs> that was exciting for me. But did you stop and help put it out? Uh, no, we didn't. I did, uh, I pulled out my, my flip phone and I called 911. Um, but we were kind of uh, deliberating on what do you do when your car is on fire, like do you stop? Because then the fire like just goes straight up, but if you're driving it shoots out the back, so... Oh, they were driving doing oh, it? Was, yeah, it was, yeah. Oh, yeah, they didn't know they were on high speed. Oh my right. gosh! Yeah. No, they were dragging something that had like caused sparks and flame. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. Uh, my favorite memory from the tour, our touring just happened recently. We were out on the west coast uh, and a friend of mine is the assistant winemaker at Ilahi vineyards and we got a private tour of the, the winery there and I'd recommend taking the public tour but a private tour was really nice. <laughs> I can imagine. Got to, uh, you got a little bit more than the one ounce taste that everybody else gets? Right and got to try a little bit more variety of things yeah. that weren't quite re ready yet which was a lot of fun and my friend is super knowledgeable and it's in a beautiful location, it was a beautiful day. Uh, I was stationed by Napa when I was in the Navy and I will say this on camera, it's a, it's a cheap drunk for sailors. It really <laughs> is. It's great. And now your story. Sure. Um, today's been a great day. We stopped at Lake Hartwell on the South Carolina Georgia border and jumped in the water. Had a wonderful swim. Mm -hmm. uh, dried, off, dried off on the picnic benches, benches and then came on this way down to Duluth. Now you guys aren't from that far away. You're up in North Carolina. That's right. That's right. Uh, are any of your hometown fans following you down here? Do you have a good, uh, good uh, <clears throat> uh, fan base out there? A good ground, uh, grounded fan base? You know, it's growing in some markets. It's great in other markets. It's, I think it's probably like any band. It really varies town to town. Uh, definitely, I think North Carolina expats form the uh, the basis of, of many of our fan uh, base in different towns. Uh, Atlanta in particular. And we have a, a good number of people who come. You know, Atlanta's one of the biggest cities in the South, so it draws people from everywhere. Now, one of the things I keep reading about you is a cross between the Kinks and the Beatles. <laughs> so uh, this is sort of like a very unique, phenomenal type of music that you guys are playing. A lot of it's 60s, almost 60s type bass. What draws you to that type of music versus say today's alt indie type uh, uh, genre? I don't know, maybe it's a subconscious thing. I don't know if you can always dictate what kind of melodies are going to come out. Or I mean, we, I think we all grew up listening to a lot of that 60s stuff, but I mean, I, I love really songs from every uh, genre in every decade. 
Um, right now I'm listening to a lot of old country from the 50s and pop radio, so uh, go Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you guys uh, had your ideal um, touring <laughs> band that you could go out on tour with, whether it would be they open for you or you open for them, who would it be? Alive or dead, too, it doesn't matter. Oh. Um, I guess this is going to be edited, right? No, not at all. This is going to look oh, great. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's hard to turn away from Led Zeppelin. Oh, yes. Not really. Yeah. Being very creative past that. Oh, yeah. That would be nice. How about you guys? Mm. Man, he really just did that. Yeah, with Led Zeppelin. Uh, I would love to open for Paul McCartney, actually, uh, which is kind of a stretch. Let's see. Maybe more realistic, I'd love to open shows for Dr. Dog. Huh? They're a great log band, uh, and I could watch them every night, which is an aspect of touring with someone that shouldn't overlook. It, so. And Daniel? Yeah, I'd like to open for Mozart or something like that. <laughs> oh, yeah, see, there you go, there you go. Okay, so the, the question then is, it, you've named some bands. If I were to go uh, to your car right now and, and, and find out who's the CD in your car player, who would I find? Uh, sure, uh, our, a friend gave me a, a live Irish band um, from some bar that he recorded there. I don't like it, it's mostly... <laughs> yeah. um, the blowpipes, what are they called? Bagpipes. Bagpipes, and, yes, yeah. yes. And I like the bagpipes, I just didn't like this CD. Mm. The last CD we listened to was Kanye West's new record, oh. um, which we have mixed opinions of. Yeah. Of uh, Otis Redding mix. Oh, nice. There you go. Well, guys, I really appreciate the time. Is there anything you'd like to tell our readers about your upcoming album or about where to find you next on the road? Sure, they can take a look at uh, our website, bombadillmusic.com, has our tour dates, which we ourselves are not the best at keeping <laughs> up with mentally. We have to look at the, uh, the chart, but I know we're going to uh, the Northeast in July for two weeks. We'll be in towns like New York and Boston and Philadelphia. Um, and yeah, all that information can be found on our website. So bombadilmusic.com. Bombadil B-O-M-B-A-D-I-L music.com. Yes, sir. That's well, it. guys, thank you so much for coming so today. Much, I really appreciate it. it. Thank you, sir. And thank looking you. forward to your show tonight. Great. Check these guys out. You're going to enjoy it.